Matthew chapter number 4 verse 23 and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues all right. preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. For a few moments, on today, I want to talk to you from the subject in his presence. Amen. In his presence. And I want you to point to yourself and say, Jesus is my healing place. Amen. And for a thing, I want you to understand Elder Kim. The hurt may not be our fault, but the healing is our responsibility. And Judson W. Ben DeVenter, in his hymn, gives us direction to get to the place of healing where he simply wrote, All to Jesus I surrender. All to thee I freely give. I will never love and trust you in your presence daily live I surrender all all to me my blessed savior I surrender all as men and women of God who are striving to embrace the discipleship process and we are striving to grow as disciples as we've discussed before this is not an easy nor an obstacle free process do I got a witness the discipleship process which includes the invitation from Jesus the transformation by Jesus and the culmination of becoming fishers of men guarantees us that there are going to be some unanticipated heartache. There's going to be some struggle in our lives. And we understand this, Deacon Belchers, because Jesus personally lets us know in Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 that if we are going to follow him that not only must we deny ourselves but we must take up our cross daily. My brothers and my sisters that lets us know without a doubt that there's going to be some adversity. There's going to be some Suffering. There's going to be some betrayal Amen. inside the church mm-hmm. and outside the church. Oh, yes. yeah. There's going to be some times that we are disconnected from our brothers and our sisters. There's going to be some time when we are disconnected from friends. And there's going to be some time when we are disconnected from our family. Uh-huh. Amen. There's also going to be some agitation. All this is going to take place. As we do our best to follow God's commands in excellence. All right. Sooner or later, as disciples, we are going to find ourselves in a place of hurt. Wondering why 
is happening to us. The words, let me address the elephant in the room. We have to ask ourselves, how can ones who are hurt, broken, and in need of healing, teach, preach, and lead others who are in spiritual darkness to a place of deliverance and healing. We understand from last week, Sister Sue, that we have to follow the blueprint. We may not be able to teach like Jesus. We may not be able to preach it like Jesus. We may not be able to heal like Jesus, but we must make a conscious effort. And I want y'all to hear me clearly. We must be agents of thorough teaching. We must be agents of authentic biblical preaching. And we must be loving channels of healing even when we are hurt and even when we are broken. Do I need to say that again? I'm going to say it one more time. You listen to me, Sister Susan. Yeah. No matter what we go through. I'm talking, I'm talking to Sister Sue right now. No matter what we go through. No matter what folks say about us. No matter what they do to us. We must be agents of thorough teaching. That means we need to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2.15 for my Bible readers. We must be able to be vessels that can authentically and transparently preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus the Christ. And we must be loving channels of healing even when we are hurt and when we are broken. We are never to be Agents of harm, mm -hmm. agents of neglect, mm -hmm. nor agents of destruction. Amen. We are not any of the above, even in the midst of us bearing our cross, or even in the midst of the healing process. And we are responsible. For our healing process. Furthermore, when it comes to being agents of healing, Deacon Simpson, even when we are broken, we are commanded to be kind, to be compassionate, to be forgiving, and to be loving. This is because. Even when we are in the midst of being hurt as disciples, and as we stated last week, Sister Sharon, we are appointed representatives. And as appointed representatives, no matter how we are done, we must live right. Yes, yes. Love unconditionally and walk obediently to the word of God even when we are broken. Come on, God. If we are wounded or we find ourselves in the recovery room, uh -huh. we must still be able to get people by the aid of the Holy Spirit from the place that they are into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. All right. We do this by going, knowing, living, and preaching the good news. However, the Bible never states that 
that in the midst of our going, in the midst of our knowing, living, and preaching that we would not be hurt in the process. But we must understand the same message that we are trying to get other people to understand. Y'all missing that? We must understand the good news. The same way we are trying to get other folk to understand the good news. Yes, sir. And we understand that we must be in the presence of Jesus as we strive to get them to the presence of Jesus. Because we know that in the presence of Jesus Christ, that is where our healing and our deliverance takes place. Amen. To intentionally, to intentionally get to the place of healing, we must have faith. And we understand that faith is the substance of things hopeful. And the evidence of things not seen. And we understand that Jesus is our creator, our redeemer, and he is our Lord. To intentionally, I want you to hear me closely, to intentionally get to a place of healing. We must trust the fact that he is a heart fixer. Yes, he is. To intentionally get to the place of healing, we must have faith that when we are distraught, Jesus is our comfort. All right. To intentionally get to a place of healing, we must understand that he is the most skilled surgeon who has never lost the patient. All right. To intentionally get to a place of healing, we must comprehend he is our sanctuary and a place of preservation in our time of uneasiness. Right. To intentionally get to a place of healing, and I want you to hear this closely, we must know that he is marrow yeah. All right. to our bones. Yeah. Yeah. When sin seeks to infect our souls to attention. All right. Yes. Amen. Get to a place of healing. We must understand that Jesus is our Savior. Oh, yes. And He is our Lord. Yes. See, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Oh, yes. From which cometh my help. Oh, yes. My help oh. is coming from the Lord. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is my help. Jesus is my help. Isn't it good to know that no matter what we endure, that Jesus is our help. Let us note that none of the Gospels include the name of the authors in the original manuscript. They are technically anonymous. It is not surprising that they are anonymous since the author likely compiled their gospel accounts for members of their own church. And the members of their church already knew who they were. In the text, in this text, in particular, it introduces all people to Jesus. All right. And it informs and reaffirms the Jewish reader that Jesus of Nazareth is Yahweh's promised Messiah. Amen. Furthermore, Deacon Granted has an authenticated by the earliest traditions of the church that this gospel text yes, sir. was penned by the former tax collector All right. who they didn't like from Galilee and we also know him by the name of Levi. Uh -huh. The most important term in our passage for today 
is that Jesus went throughout all of Galilee teaching, preaching, and healing. Yes. Y'all got that? Yes. He was willing, yes. which lets us know that Jesus was committed to the fulfillment of his assignment. My brothers and my sisters, no matter how Jesus was received, no matter how Jesus was treated, yes. whether he was understood or misunderstood, he was willing to endure. He was willing to endure for the sake of his assignment. Well, let me throw this in parenthetically. It would be unwise for us to assume that Jesus was adored, loved, celebrated, and well received every time he taught, Amen. preached, or healed. However, we do understand by the text that no matter how Jesus was received, he was committed to the fulfillment of his assignment. All right. Y'all with me? He was committed to teach, to preach, and to heal. This lets us know, the Evangelists, that no matter how we are received, if folk like us, don't like us, if they support us, or don't support us, we ought to be committed to the fulfillment of our God-given assignment. Amen. Understand that the meat of what we are discussing on today is that we must endure. Even though we may not always see eye to eye with other believers. Even though we may not always be well received or celebrated or even loved. And sometimes we get the support but we just don't feel we get the support that we deserve. But think about this. If nobody loves you, God does. Amen. Amen. And that's more than enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God all time. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we may be hurt. Some of us may have new wounds. Uh-huh. Well. Some of us may be still tending to old wounds. But as appointed representatives, we are to never act out of Christian character. Yes. Or act unrighteously. Nor are we to pass our hurt onto other folks. Yes. Amen. Because our mandate as appointed representatives of Jesus Christ, I want you to hear me, is to love them, to teach them to preach to them and get them into the presence of Jesus Christ so he can usher in healing yes, yes. and deliverance. Amen. Yes, yes. Furthermore, we understand with this being the blueprint that we are to model our movement as appointed representatives after the movement of Jesus Christ. This means, y'all hear me? All right. That we are to emulate, let me do as Jesus does, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are going to be times when we are knee deep in church hurt. Stay committed to the fulfillment of your assignment. Mm. There will be times when people don't 
agree with our fault patterns as individuals or as a collective stay committed to the fulfillment of your assignment yes there will be times when people have not talked honestly about us but we are not called to care about what he say or what she say stay committed to the fulfillment of your assignment yeah there will be times when folk don't know and create fables and fictional stories that cause you embarrassment. All right. Don't worry about that. Stay committed to the fulfillment of your assignment. Amen. There will be times when folk don't see you as the teacher, the preacher, the pastor, or the leader that they want. God, God called you. Stay committed to the fulfillment of your assignments. I promise you on today, as a believer, you will be lied on. You will be talked about. You will be mistreated. You will end up with mental and spiritual brokenness on some days. But still, in spite of it all, we have to be willing. To tend to and heal our own wounds. Mm -hmm. yes. As we walk righteously mm. and as we continually and progressively teach the truth about Jesus. Yes, we have to be willing to tend to and heal our own wounds as we walk righteously while we preach the gospel and while we live the gospel. We have to be willing to tend to and heal our own wounds as we walk righteously while being a channel of healing. Just like Jesus did. All right. With all of that said, as we seek to be fishers of people. How do we end the cycle of being hurt people that hurt people? Come on now. Number one, we must truthfully identify and acknowledge our brokenness. We must understand the source. Amen. And let me throw this in parenthetically. The source is not always other folk. All right. Sometimes we are enduring because of our own sinfulness. All right. But we must acknowledge our brokenness and its source. All while getting to where God is. All right. Consistently. Number two, and this may be the most difficult, we have to learn to forgive ourselves. Oh, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. We must learn to forgive others and truly embrace the forgiveness Amen. and the healing that Jesus is offering us. Point number three is scripture. We must be kind to one another. Tender hearted towards one another. Forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven us. Amen. We understand that the cross Hallelujah. that Jesus gave us may be heaven, but it never outweighs his grace. The storm that I feared may surround me, but the storm, it never excludes his face. Sometimes I may feel lost in the midst of life's struggles, 
But the cross is not greater than his grace. Yeah. We may be dealing with church hurt on today, but the cross we bear yeah. never outweighs his grace. Yeah. We may need the power, the power. to do a walk work of reconstruction on these jars of clay, yeah. but the cross we bear yeah. never outweighs yeah. his grace. Yeah. We may feel like we are walking this journey yeah. all alone, yeah. but the cross we bear well. never outweighs yeah. his grace. We may ask ourselves, well, will this pain Jesus. ever end? Yeah. We must understand mm -hmm. that the cross we bear yes. never outweighs oh, his grace. Yeah. We are doing our best yeah. to love, yeah. but sometimes yeah. we don't feel love yeah. in return. Yeah. But the cross we bear. It never outweighs his grace to get into his presence. See, I left my friends and kindred to get into his presence. I made up my mind. I was bound for the promised land to get into his presence. The grace of God was upon me to get into his presence. The Bible was in my hand to get into his presence in a distant land called New York. I tried crying sinners, running to God. See, I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. In the midst of the heartache, we can all have joy. In the midst of our loneliness, we have a faithful companion. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. In the midst of being desperate, we can be a fluid. See, when we're weary and heavy laden, He gives us strength and He is our strength. When we are lied on, talked about. He's our lawyer and our advocate. When we are lost, he is the way and he is our God. When we are in darkness, he is our light. When we are obstructed, he is our help. See, my brothers and my sisters, because he is good, when we are hurt, we can be what he calls us to be because he is faithful when we are hurt we can be what he calls us to be because he is present when we are hurt we can be what he calls us to be because he delivers when we are hurt we can be what he calls us to be because he died when we are hurt, we can be what he called us to be because he sustains, because he protects, because he is all knowing, because he is all powerful. When we are hurt, we can be what he called us to be. My brothers and my sisters, yeah, he is the one.